Hello everyone, this is Robert. So in this video, we're gonna be comparing a 0.4 millimeter and a 0.6 millimeter nozzle on the Prusa XL to see which one has the best print quality. Spoiler alert, the 0.4 millimeter is significantly better and fixes a lot of the issues that a lot of people are seeing with their XL. So let's look at all the test prints and get into it. So first off, I want to say, please feel free to use the chapters to skip around. If you just want to see the kind of test results from 0.4 versus 0.6, feel free, go ahead and skip directly to that section. No one's going to get upset with you. Uh, I wanted to start out first by talking about kind of consistency. There's a lot of XLs out there at this point, and there's a lot of YouTubers that are kind of sharing their experiences. And I'm thinking specifically of uh, Teaching Tech's YouTube channel. He's had a lot of stringing and a lot of frustration with it. And he actually has a really good video kind of recapping his experiences with it. And I'm saying all of this because my experiences are always a little bit different than everyone else. My experience with the XL has been perfectly fine. And I just want to point out that there is a bit of variation in how one person's one person's experience is versus another's. My print quality has been generally pretty good. I've had relatively low stringing and I really haven't had any failures. It's been a very reliable, consistent printer. The print quality just hasn't been that great. It's good, but not really up to the level of what like my Mark 3S was doing and what my Bamboo X1C is doing. So that's kind of what we're addressing here. Um, I have, I think, three YouTube channels listed down below. YGK3D is one channel that I've been following, Tada 3D Printing, and then also Teaching Tech. And I know for a fact that um, James Clow of Clow42 just recently got his. We've been chatting about that, and he's been working through um, getting it together and his impressions. So be sure to check out his channel kind of when he gets those videos up on that. So I just kind of want to throw that out there. There's three other channels listed down below that you can kind of see some other people's impressions of the printer, their print quality, and their experiences with it. So that being said, let's get into the comparison between the 0.4 and the 0.6 millimeter nozzles. So let's talk about the test setup. Here I've got all of the models that I printed in both 0.6 and 0.4 millimeters. So this is all the 0.6 millimeter stuff. On this side, we have all of the PLA, and on this side, we have all of the PET-G. So I printed out this um, Marlin model. This was the same one that Teaching Tech's YouTube channel was using, um, and he was having a lot of stringing with it, so I figured that would be a good model to test out. We've got that in a dual color print. This is Prusament Galaxy Silver and Galaxy Black. Then I also did the Benchy, of course, and then like the um, Kickstarter torture test thing. And of course, I just have the um, White Tower just for fun. And then we repeated all of this exact same stuff in Pet G. This is um, Overture Pet G, both black and then this kind of um, dusty blue color. So repeated all those tests. And for all of this, I tried to use the same or close to same print profiles, you know, as much as I can for the nozzles. It is all 0.25 millimeter layer height. The firmware is the same. I'm using the same slicer. And then all of these prints, I use the exact same spool of filament. So one, two, three, four different rolls of filament spools. And they're the exact same for all the tests. So I went through, printed this all out in 0.6, then changed the nozzle and did everything in 0.4. So during the test prints, I noticed something a little interesting. If we go ahead and hit print and then scroll down to this Benchy that I sliced, load it, you'll see mismatching nozzle diameters. So what's interesting is when you swap the nozzles, you actually have to tell the printer through this interface that you have a different nozzle. If we go to change, that just allows us to actually change the filament. So we have to go back go back, go back, and then we go into settings, tools, and then we select tool one, and you can see nozzle diameter is right there, so we change that to a 0.4, and then do the same for the other one. And now, if we try and load that same file, it should be good to go. 
So now everything is good, petchy, petchy, 0.4 ready to print. So I thought that was kind of interesting. It's just another check that's in there, but the G code actually calls for not only the filament, but also the nozzle size, and then that is set in the machine as well. So kind of interesting stuff. And this is kind of a good demonstration on why I actually like the rotary knob and the non-touch screen, because I personally think I can navigate this a lot faster than the touch interface. It's just, you know, easier to select things in my opinion. But anyway, I thought that was kind of interesting that if you switch nozzles, you got to switch the nozzle diameter for each one of the extruders in this interface as well. Okay, so now I have all the 0.6 millimeter prints done. It's time to swap out the nozzle and do the 0.4 millimeters. Swapping the nozzles is a little bit different on this machine than some others. You can do it cold. So it basically means that you just have to eject or unload the filament from every nozzle that you want to change. And because this is the tool changer, you can just kind of undock it manually by hand, just kind of pull it off the back, set it on the bed, and just take out the nozzle that way. You still kind of need two hands and you kind of need a tool for it. You basically got to hold the um, heater block in place and then unscrew the nozzle. That whole assembly kind of unscrews out. There's a little set screw that holds it in. You have to do that first. But then once you get the nozzle out, you just put the new one in, screw it back. It's pretty straightforward. There's um, really not much to it. And you can do it cold and you can take the tool head off and do it on the bed like this, which is kind of nice. So let's start by looking at the PLA and start with the Benchy. Let's see if you can tell which one's which. That's the 0.6, that is the 0.4. There's a pretty noticeable difference between them. And keep in mind, this is the same layer size. So even though there looks like there's more detail and this one is cleaner, they're technically the same layer. Um, biggest thing I notice is that the roof on this one is kind of rough. You got a little bit of under extrusion right there, some under extrusion on the smokestack, whereas with the 0.4, it is classic perfection. There's nothing wrong with this whatsoever. It looks really, really good. Yet on this one, we see very visible um, hole line right there. Very, very visible. We've got a little bit of stringing, a little bit of under extrusion, and overall it just looks a little bit rougher. Like look at it from that angle, you can see all the steps, all the little jaggies. This one is very, very clean. Exact same filament and 0.25 millimeter layer height. Next up, we have this little 3D printer test. There's not a whole lot to talk about here other than the tolerances. This is the 0.6, that is the 0.4. And if you notice on the 0.6, I couldn't get this plug out. These are meant to pop out. It's a kind of a tolerance at the 0.2 millimeter. This one is not coming out. These all popped out, no problem. There's a little bit of stringing on both. I'm gonna talk about the stringing here in a second when I talk about the PET-G. Little bit of stringing, fine whiffs on both. They come off pretty easy. A hairdryer or lighter would take them off, but we'll talk about that in a second. Overall, the 0.6 just looks a little bit rougher. Everything is just kind of a little bit sloppier. Um, the 0.4 definitely looks better as far as the um, bridges. They're both pretty good. Everything was pretty decent in both of these, but the tolerance was definitely a lot worse on the 0.6. Also, you can see there is a very visible line right there that is not present on the 0.4. It's very, very minor on the 0.4. And lastly, the Marlin fish model. If we look at these two, they look pretty similar, but there's definitely some differences. This is the 0.6, and if we look closely, yeah, you can see that there is some weirdness on the cheek and back there. And this is obviously not in the model as we will see. And I was watching this print because I actually tried this a couple times and it just kind of, it's the overhang. Even though these have the exact same layer height, it just has an issue with this little tiny overhang right there and right there. And also if we look on this rear fin, you can see a little bit of stringing between the fin and the body. And some of this already kind of cleaned up a little bit, but definitely some stringing. There's no real cross contamination between the black and the silver, but overall this model is, you know, it's okay. It's good. It's pretty good, but not great. But if we look at the 0.4, 
it is perfect. Look at the definition in the back fins. There is not even a hint of stringing there. And if we look at that cheek area, absolutely perfect and perfect in the back. Not even a hint of what this one was having an issue with. Look at that versus that. This one in person is so much better. This is absolutely on the level, if not above the level of what something like a Bamboo X1C with an AMS can do. This is what I was expecting. This is an absolutely flawless print without any issues or imperfections whatsoever and no cross bleed, no stringing, and the wipe tower couldn't get much better than that. A um, couple little zits on there, but that's obviously to be expected. It is just the white tower. So with PET G, the story is pretty similar. You can pretty clearly and immediately see which one's which. That's 0 0.6, that's 0 0.4. This is probably one of the best benchies I've ever printed at 0.4. It is just shiny. There is, once again, no issues. Roof looks good. Bottom looks good, hull looks good, no problems whatsoever. If we look at the 0.6, it's okay. It is just okay. You can see a little bit of hull line there, and it just looks a little bit rough overall. There's eh, maybe the tiniest bit of elephant foot, a little bit of stringing up there, a little bit of you know, stringing kind of on the inside, a little bit in the back. So, you know, it's fine but not at the level that you would expect, whereas the 0.4 is just, you know, exactly what you would think it would be. So the plot thickens a little bit. This is PET G. This is the same um, torture test as before. This is 0.6. This is 0.4. And look at all that stringing. What's happening? Well, uh, we got a problem here. The tolerance is kind of still the same. We still have an issue with the tolerance. We still have kind of this line that's showing up. This one still looks cleaner overall. And if we look at the overhangs, nice, ugly. So overall, the 0.4 is better, but the 0.4 has a lot more stringing. So it's time to look at the filament. So temperature tower. Um, if you, anyone's not familiar, temperature tower is basically this tower that you print and it has different temperatures. And at each one of these levels, you change the temperature. So it's a good way to kind of dial in what is the best temperature for the filament. I did a couple things. I put this aside, dried that filament, put it in the filament dryer for overnight, and then printed one of these. I have the link down below for someone that has lovingly pre-sliced these for every Prusa printer, including the XL. Thank you so much for doing that. The printer was printing around, I think, 240 or 245. It's hard to see on camera, but it's really shiny and kind of gummy looking. I chose, I think, like 230 or 235, so about 10 degrees cooler, and just decided to print the top section. This is before drying and before the temperature tower. This is after. This is Pet G. And it is amazing. I mean, this thing doesn't have a single string on it whatsoever. So I decided to do that and then reprint the entire thing. And this is how it turned out. This thing looks fantastic. There is not a single string up there. There might have been one tiny little wisp that I instinctively pulled away. I think there's like there's a tiny one right there. But other than that, this is perfect. Every single one of the plugs came out. Um, the overhangs down here look pretty decent for PET G. Everything looks really good. And let me see, this was the, yeah. So this is the 0.6 and this is the 0.4. So once again, the 0.4 with the proper filament temperature ended up turning out fantastic. Now, what I should have done for the original PLA is I should have done the temperature tower for the PLA as well, because I probably could have gotten an even better result out of that, but the stringing is just absolutely gone. No issues whatsoever on this. Everything looks fantastic.
So now that we got all the settings for pet G dialed in, we can look at the fish model. So we've got the 0.6 once again over here and the 0.4, and the differences are very similar to what the PLA was. The 0.6 is good. Um, we still have a little bit of an issue right there, a little bit of an issue right there. Um, you can see that the bottom fin just really didn't stick. Um, when I was watching this print, it would just kind of drag along the nozzle and it actually got kind of deposited over here, it might be difficult to tell, but it just kind of ended up dragging going over there because it was a little bit stringy. And then you can kind of see, it's just, you know, some little artifacts and gunk. There's a tiny bit of stringing back in here. Nothing too bad. I mean, this model looks pretty decent. Um, no real issues. I think there is, you know, just like a little bit of line there. You can see some like inconsistent extrusion, um, a little bit of cross-contamination where the black kind of bled in right there. But if we look at the 0.4 millimeter, it looks pretty much flawless. There's no real issues to it whatsoever. We don't have any of those weird artifacts there or there, and no stringing in the back there. Looks perfectly clean, and everything looks really detailed and very pretty. This is about as good as you're going to get from a Pet G. Print. So yeah, that is what PET G looks like when it's all dialed in on a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on the XL. So I'm very tempted to do the clickbait thumbnail where I look at something like I have cognitive challenges and then say something like, you know, I fixed the Prusa XL, but that's not really the case. The Prusa XL just should have come with a 4.4 millimeter nozzle to start with. The fact that it came with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and just for whatever reason, wasn't tuned for that. Like, I, I still think this is a print profile thing. I think there's just something weird about the print profiles, maybe something weird in the firmware. Who knows? I'm not gonna make speculations. Why don't you put your speculations down in the comments? That would be fantastic. I just, I don't know what's going on. What I do know is that a 0.4 millimeter nozzle in this machine is wonderful. It makes the print quality fantastic. The tool changer, is fantastic. The ease of use has been fantastic other than, you know, a couple of the little network issues. The only thing that this thing is missing is speed. It is not up to the level of a modern Core XY. It's a little bit faster than most bed slingers, but it has the capability with input shaping and all that good stuff to be as fast as some of the fast printers out there. So that's the thing that I'm crossing my fingers for. But right now I've got a tool changer and I've got really solid, reliable print quality. So I don't know, I'm pretty happy with that overall. If you're having issues with print quality, check out a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. It might solve everything. Just make sure to do the um, temperature tower, tune your filament, dry your filament, and then, you know, kind of go from there. Um, I've listed the channels down below. I've been kind of talking with most of them about this. We'll see if they follow suit and try out 8.4 millimeter. Definitely be, able, uh, be sure to check out their channels and kind of follow their progress. I am just merely one single data point, so kind of want to, you know, make sure that everyone gets multiple data points, so not just listening to me. But anyway, um, that's all I got for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.